What's up y'all? My name is David and welcome to the Prep Station. In my last few videos, I've went over YouTube TV and Disney Plus. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the smart TV that I use to stream these services, the LG 65 inch UHD TV. I've had this TV for about two months and I'm ready to give the verdict. Let's get started. First things first, let's look at the specs. As the name suggests, this is a 65 inch model. It has an LED screen with 4K resolution. The TV weighs approximately 48 pounds and comes with table mounts. There are of course hookups for wall mounts, though no wall mount was included. This is a smart TV, so it comes with built-in Wi-Fi. There's also a slot for wired internet connection if you prefer. You can also connect to the TV via Amazon's Alexa. Right out of the box, the LG is loaded with streaming apps such as Netflix, Disney Plus, and YouTube TV. So let's look at that interface. You have your standard menu up top with search, settings, and your account interface. Below that is a large sponsored ad area, which unfortunately takes up a lot of space on the home screen. On the plus side, you usually don't spend much time on this screen. Beneath the ad, you'll find a trending now section that has some media options, including your most recent input. The next section is where most of the action takes place. This area contains all of the streaming apps, everything from Hulu to Sling, Apple TV, Prime Video, you name it. Um, there is even a web browser if you want to surf the web on your TV. I never use this feature, but it's there if you need it. Next up, we have some connection options for mobile, antennas, sound output, and others. One thing to note about this TV is that it does not have traditional audio output. You will need an optical digital audio output cable to output sound to a soundbar or speakers. Below the connection options, we have some various media categories that I don't really use much. Honestly, I spend about 90% of my time on the home screen in the app section, mostly just passing through to YouTube TV, which is my primary TV source at the moment. There'll be a link to my YouTube TV review in the description. Here's a quick look at the remote. Nothing groundbreaking here, just your typical TV remote. Power button up top, volume and channel controls, mute, all the classics. One thing it has that I really like are buttons for the big three streaming services, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Prime Video. I wish it also had a button for YouTube TV, but I'm glad it at least has those three. The remote requires two AAA batteries. Okay, you've seen the specs, you've seen the interface, but how does the TV perform? Overall, I am extremely happy with this model. We bought it a couple of weeks before Christmas and got it for around $500. The video quality has been fantastic. We upgraded our internet from cable to fiber optic around the same time, and when you get a program playing in 4K at 60 FPS, it's like you are in the scene. Just a really fun cinematic experience. I do want to give a word of caution though when it comes to smart TVs and cord cutting in general. While I highly recommend it, make sure you have the internet for it. You may need, uh, you need good speed and plenty of bandwidth to really get the most out of your smart TV. But if you've got the internet for it, this 65 inch LG TV is a great deal and I think you will really enjoy it. There will be an affiliate link to this model on Amazon in the description. Well that about wraps things up. If you're thinking about cutting the cord and ditching your cable service, check out my reviews of YouTube TV and Disney Plus for some great alternatives. But before you go, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.